let's go Howdy love in the house, dropping knowledge and facts Uncovering the truth, no need for acting last She ain't afraid to speak her mind, breaking through the lies Rising up with love, taking us to new highs We're living in a world full of secrets and deceit But Heidi's here to expose, bringing truth to the beast She's got a message, spreading it far and wide From addiction to hope, she's on the other side Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of The Unfiltered Rise. And today I have some special guests with me. You guys, how have you been? It's Jacob and Jonathan. Hey, dude. Jeff? We are stoked to be here. Um, you've come on our show a couple of times. It's only right that we repay that. Absolutely. This is true. Bring the cult members over here for a minute, right? <laughs> Absolutely. And I mean, I remember when we brought you on our show for the first time, we really didn't know too terribly much about you, but we knew from through messages of not mistaken, your story and, and your past and all of this brought you on the show. That episode did so well. I reached out to so many Mormon friends of mine to like have them listen in on that episode. It's like, okay, is this on some real levels? Did she miss anything? Did she miss the mark? Every single one of them was like, nope, she's, she's on the money. hundred <laughs> percent. Like, okay. Hell yeah. So thank you for having us back on. Uh, oh, back. Absolutely. So you guys have been busy. Tell me what you guys are up to. Tell me well, about those shows. We have been putting out a lot of shows lately. And uh, we recently, for the cult, we recently started doing a fourth episode per week, um, and we call it Throwback Thursday. So what we'll do is, because we're almost to 500 episodes, and so what wow. we'll do is we'll take something from, you know, the early hundreds or the early, you know, double digits or single digits and just get real crazy with it. And, and it's our way of kind of introducing those who may be new to conspiracies while also slam dunking on the elite for all the times that we were right. Yeah, no right. doubt. In other news, right. uh, Jonathan has moved to Texas. Uh, I am still oh. based in Louisiana. Um, we have now, to our, our business has gone uh, national rather than just statewide. And uh, oh. that's also good. And we are learning all that as it goes. This is now Jonathan's full-time job. Uh, here in the next few months, it will be my full-time job. And Yay! Yeah, that is living the dream. You guys said you were living the dream. That is living the dream. Oh my god, yeah. Congrats. Yes, it's great. And I also have another podcast called Meta Mysteries. We get into all of the woo-woo, spiritual, crazy stuff on there. Kind of doing deep dives with no lenses. Um, because one thing that I really notice is is that you know, typically whenever uh, somebody who is religious and they like to do a deep dive on another kind of religion, not for everybody, but typically what you hear is, oh, that's the work of the devil. Oh, that's just the devil. <laughs> that's Satan trying to fool everybody. And that can't, none of that can be true. Flower of life. No, that's the devil of life. And it's like, I don't think that that's what they were aiming for, but you Maybe know, you missed the mark. <laughs> Ah, funny you said yeah. too, because in uh, supposedly whenever they translated the word sin from Hebrew or Latin or wherever the hell it came from, Greek, whenever they translated that word, it literally translates nowadays. If you were to say, um, if you were to say sin in the same kind of context that Jesus was saying it and everybody else was saying it back in the day, it more resembles our phrase missing the mark. And ah. I get down with that. That makes sense to me. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Because Absolutely. context is everything, right? Even the occultists know this. So, no doubt. And missing the mark makes sense in that realm as well. Again, life is a pass or fail event, right? There is a side of good and evil. There is a light and a dark, a yay and a nay as it goes. So, either you hit your target or you miss the mark. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Well, and you guys know I'm a weirdo Christian that studies everything. I study the occult and I study Christianity doesn't take away from the Bible. It just adds to things. And I think there is, it's all about intention, right? Any, any good uh, person, whether it be Christianity, I think they're a little less inclined to get it, but like a, definitely in occultism, they'll tell you everything is intention. So no doubt. Yeah. You gotta, gotta know it all because you're going to yeah. miss something if you don't. 
So. Well, and that's the thing is that um, my co-host and I on Meta Mysteries, we've covered a lot of the occult and mysticism and magic and, um, a, a, you know, in ancient Egyptian kind okay. of stuff and, and all that. And yeah, but as far as as far as like witchcraft and magic, for sure, it has to do with the intention. Now, I do want to clarify something. There are obviously always going to be people who take that left-hand path. There's sure. always going to be people who want more than what everybody else wants, right? Like, doesn't matter where you are, somebody always wants more than the next person. And that's really where dark magic and left-hand path and all of that satanic shit comes in because they know that the people that are working, I say in quotes, of the light... Some people might disagree with that. Um, the right hand path, you know, uh, light magic, white magic, whatever you want to call it. They know that those people will never be able to kind of rein in the powers that they're able to because they're pulling on the dark forces. I don't mess with that. I do believe in, you know, I I'm not a white magic practitioner or, you know, practicing witchcraft or anything like that. But I think that we all regularly do, we all regularly have uh, rituals, right? Like if you wake up in the morning, you go brush your teeth, you go sit down on the toilet, you, you know, you look at your face or whatever. Um, you let the dogs out, you, you know, you make yourself a cup of coffee. That's all, a, that's a morning ritual. And so yeah. I think people get that a little bit uh, convoluted in a way, far different from sacri sacrificial rituals. You know what I mean? Yeah, we're yeah for sure we're not yeah no but i think knowledge is power i think that is a really valid thing whether you're i don't practice anything dark but i certainly know about dark things right and it's even been imparted on me like like feelings from god not voices of course i have to clarify that because sometimes things get weird um but whatever i i definitely have had to study things including what we're going to discuss that are sometimes things that I'm like, why though? <laughs> or like John D when I had to go deep down on that one, I'm like, uh, I don't know if I want those books, but like it made complete sense at the end. So yeah. sometimes we don't know why. Yeah. No doubt. So yeah. In order I to really understand the, the powers that be, you need to look at all the practices that they've practiced. It only makes sense. How are you going to know if you're being manipulated if you don't know the tools in which they're manipulating you with? Yes, a hundred percent. A hundred percent. Like you said, Christians are probably a little slow to get it, right? Or at least to even acknowledge that these things are real. And I've brought this up a couple of different times and in a couple of different ways, but like, just bear with me here. Alchemy would be a form of mm -hmm. occult knowledge right? Occult mm -hmm. practices, witchcraft, these things, the dark arts, the, but understand that alchemy is also the foundational building blocks for what we now call chemistry and what we now mm -hmm. call herbology and what we now call pharmaceuticals. So like right. for an instance, the old uh, woman in the hovel in the woods that would be making herbal remedies that could cure your stomach or do whatever for what we would now call herbology back in those days, she was the fucking witch of the woods, right? And mm -hmm. like the townsfolk yeah. were cool with her until they needed a bad guy. Then they would blame her for some kid being missing or some shit like that. And she would be burned alive. That's how that typically would go down. So in reality, sure. was she a witch practicing the dark arts and calling upon the spirits? Or was she somebody who grew up in the woods and knew which roots to mix? Maybe a little of both was happening at the same time. Maybe she really was just a, uh, a herbologist early form. Who's to say? Mm -hmm. It's like, where do we draw the line between what is of God or what is of good, right? And what is of evil or what is being used? And you said it was intent, right? And that's, mm -hmm. that's a very powerful word. Because at, we've used the example before also, the same fire that you use to cook your food and heat your home can also be used to burn you alive or burn down your house. The fire is not inherently evil or good. It is how it is used. However, like you said, and like Jonathan said, there are those that will take the left-hand path. There are those that will use these powers for dark purposes with dark intent, using evil for evil. There's, there's absolutely that out there. But again, it's not even like, well, where do we draw the line? It's like, yo, genuine discernment should be able to tell you pretty quickly what's happening here. 
Well, and that's the same thing. Like a few months ago on Meta, we read the book called The Magician by Philip Cooper. And I guess there was a bunch of people that, you know, reached out or had an opinion on if we should or shouldn't be reading that book. They're like, you don't know that you're messing with Satan. That you don't know that you're calling upon the dark Lord. And I'm like, nowhere in that book does it talk about any deity. As a matter of fact, it makes fun of people who believe in deities. And so Voldemort. Voldemort's name isn't in the Magician one time, people. Read a book. Jeez. I mean, Nothing the about- same people that would like curse you for saying that would read Voldemort, to be honest, because Christians are obsessed with that crap. So and that's what I'm saying. Like in, in the yep. book it talks about, you know, having your shield and your cup and your sword and all of these. They're really just uh, they're placeholders for the elements, air, fire, water. Um, I can never remember the other one anyway, um, in earth. And so, um, <laughs> it's funny cause I live here, but, sure. um, <laughs> but like they all, they're all representations of the elements of earth within our subconscious mind. And so whenever you go, and this is going to get a little controversial, I suppose, but it does talk about going through the two pillars in your mind. Um, And that's to say that that's kind of like some kind of crossover into this etheric realm in a sense, because you got to understand that most of this, most people who practice um, any kind of magic, it's subconscious work. Like it's not, yes, they have, you know, they have their, their seances and they have their candles and they have, you know, uh, the North and the East and the South and the West on in, in their little room inside of their temple, but the temple that that you're practicing magic in, it is all about the actual temple that's within your mind. And that's where it's trying to get you to go. And that is how they say you're able to manifest these things if you go through the right rituals. Not calling upon Satan, not saying that it's good or bad. I'm just saying it's not that. Well, that's a perfect lead into what we're going to talk about today since we landed into witches and uh, fun things, which is the demonology books that King James had written. Because I think what Jacob alluded to was, how do you draw the line? Who makes the rules? Well, this is somebody that tried to make the rules. Did he do it right? I sure hope not. (laughs) I don't know that his uh, ways that he did it were very uh, good. (laughs) <laughs> we had a part series on demonology written by King James the First of England, as a matter of fact. The way yes. he wrote this book was very interesting, right? The same dude that wrote, quote unquote, wrote the King James Bible, decided to write a book on demonology, demonology, right, if you will. Mm-hmm. And he does it in the form of two gentlemen having a conversation about third party knowledge that they heard hypothetically. It's right. very interesting that he did it this way. And I like, it, even when we broke down these books, I had to make the reference, I think like eight times per episode. This is the opinions of this one dude right. from 1596. Like it was like, this is not the opinions of the cult of conspiracy. Don't think I'm saying this about women. Don't think like, yo, this is, this is them. Well, you know? one very influential dude of the time though. Oh, for sure. Yeah, You know what I mean? And so those, it's not just somebody having a thought or uh, conversating within their mind. Like, yeah, I get what you're saying. It's not, you know, now or whatever, but it's like those, those kind of people, that's just how they thought back then, dude. Right, right, right. Excuse me. Excuse me. This wasn't just King James that saw it this way, but like, for instance, when they brought up the part about why is there like a 20 to one ratio of girls to guys within the ranks of, of demonic arts and all this. And he quickly was like, Oh, because women are more feeble of the mind and, and yeah. more prone to falling into the snares of the wicked. Obviously they're females. They're Obvious. Wicked. I mean, right. Dude. Goes back to the apple. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, boy. Back to Adam and Eve. And I'm like, dude Mm -hmm. okay so again we this is not us we are talking on it you know (laughs) and i loved that series i actually listened to the whole thing and i thought it was really good so i listen to you guys all the time (laughs) thank you (laughs) yeah of course of course and that's saying something right now that i'm in this i used to listen to all the things but once you do the things you don't have time um so i yeah but those i make time for because i'm like oh I definitely want to hear this. So you guys are good. I feel bad about oh, that. Too. Now that I'm a quote unquote content creator, I don't like that. Let's call it podcaster, right? Now that we're yeah. podcasters, 
I hate that I don't listen to certain podcasts that I used to. And it's not that I've that liked, you love. Yeah. Right. And it's not like I don't like that content creator anymore. I don't like what they're saying. It's like there's really only 24 hours in the day. And I'm I'm mm -hmm. doing research for my own show on top of juggling the other stuff. It it's a pain, man. Yeah, it's hard yeah. because, you know, I used to drive for a living. So I would be in my car 10, 12 hours a day. I would run mm -hmm. out of podcasts to listen to. Like I listened to them all, dude. And I had a like wow. a lot of favorite ones. And now I don't really have time to listen to so much of them anymore. So we just invite them on the show instead. <laughs> well, that's a fun way to do it because I get it. Like either if you are listening to a podcast or some kind of information audio, then it's to prep for a show. Right. Yep, pretty it's much. Just, yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's, that's man. I hate it. But <laughs> at the same time, yeah, love the hustle too. You know, it, yes. it's grind, but I'd be yeah. lying if I said I haven't fallen in love with the process. Same. Yes, I do. I think it's fun. And it's kind of, I mean, it helps your mind keep going, you know, like this is something that's so important. I think that mm -hmm. uh, so many people are content with not, not doing that. And so. So you know, me... from a very young age, I like I never knew really what I wanted to be because there wasn't really any jobs out there that I was really stoked about, you know, working at. Like, mm -hmm. you know, as a little kid, I wanted to be a football player, but I grew up and I never turned into NFL size football player. So that didn't work. Mm -hmm. So after that, it was like, you know, I'm looking around and I'm working restaurant jobs or driving jobs or something like that. And and it's like. Then when podcasting kind of fell into our laps, it's almost like, oh, wow, this is what I was waiting for all along. Like it was so mm -hmm. magical because it gives us an outlet to do a lot of research, to understand the world we live in, both the spiritual world and the physical world. And those yes. are two of my favorite things to really study, you know, and, yeah. and, also, and also question because it's, it's hard enough learning the information as its own, right? But then you got to sift through what's right, what's wrong, who's telling a lie, who's who's like uh, boost, bolstering up their opinion of a certain thing in order to make it seem bigger than what it really is. And like, so it's it's really become a science, actually. Yep, yep, I agree. And it, it's so interesting, like when you when you really get into things, how much of it interconnects, and how much of it interconnects into history, politics, and the world. Right. And then you're like, oh, I got it. Okay. Nope. I get you. Yeah. And when you guys say open up your third eye, like, I mean, as a Christian, right, we're not supposed to say that, but like, whatever. But I just say, I get it. It's like, learn. Like, we're never supposed to stop learning. We aren't. Exactly. You know? Well, I mean, even Jesus's quote, if therefore thine eye be single, then your whole body should be full of light. You think he was talking about your eyeballs? <laughs> no definitely not as the and, uh, president christian of our show look it's a catchphrase you know what i mean if people are gonna get their panties in a wad about that then they probably don't like our show anyway because in the yeah, same same. that i boost the bible and and talk about the power of god and the love of christ i also talk mm -hmm. about shit and fuck and all the other things too so i mean i am a very, clearly imperfect christian and if they don't get down with that they probably don't get down with the show anyway yeah, if if they get offended by that, that's like, you know, if we're if we're pushing, do you want to take the red pill or the blue pill? And they're like, oh, they're pushing big pharma. I can't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're not at not, all. Not the right, not the right thing what we're talking about, right? And yeah. I mean, I think all of this, this definitely gets skipped on because if you go ask Christians, like say you have a, a room full of a hundred Christians and you say, Did King James ever write a book about demons they'll say no how many people do you know that know this like like Most, in, in a general right yeah, yeah absolutely. they don't and so here's my question if the bible is our little study guide for life and i'm not saying that the his tactics were awful i'm just saying that there's some information here that's good um then this is also important right you, you I agree you have to. Yeah. Like history means something. And so much of it is erased in general. So I think this is pertinent, you know, whether or not you buy it, whatever it's, it's fact. It's a fact. It's so. at least it was a fact for them. Right. And whether yes. it is real or is true, 
people died as a result of this. So yes. it was realistic. And it, was, it, was, it happened. Yeah, it happened. Yeah, right. it's real. So I will so. this as far as what he, the information gathered from these witch trials. Okay. Mm-hmm. Historically speaking, truth of the matter speaking, let's break this all the way down. When he brought up those that deal in lot, he was talking about those that cast bones and runes. He's talking about those that play with tarot cards. He's talking about those that deal with anything where there's an element to chance involved and you're looking to it for answers, a fortune telling of some type, whatever. Mm-hmm. He also brought up the fact that people that wore talismans or totems, I think was the word that he brought up or tokens made by somebody who they may not have known was making it with witchcraft. They just thought it was a cool little medallion and they wear it around their neck. Are they in, in, uh, are they in guilt? Right. Are they guilty of, of committing a crime against God or whatever, whatever they broke it down on some very random examples, but it was what they thought was important at this time. They make mention of those that deal with potions and powders and things like that. And they even gave the distinction that some of these people are in that gray area of quote unquote magic, right? It's mm-hmm. like they knew that it was probably something in the realm of science but they didn't have the science to back it. So they left in that gray area and said, those people are probably okay, but like keep an eye on them. He broke down all, it just, it was very strange that a lot of the uh, things to look for, right? The, the knowledge gained from these trials, some of them do in fact go in line with occult practices that we do know from around the world. However, yes. others are completely out of left field and sound exactly like what they were. The random babblings of somebody who's been through literal medieval torture for weeks and will say mm-hmm. literally anything to make it stop and let them finally grant them death. So there's like there- pricking, like the pricking is like, okay, it's going to be. So one of their fun toys was to see if there was a numb spot with a needle by poking over and over. Well, as a nurse or anybody that's had a tattoo can tell you after you are poked so many times with that needle, it's all numb, like whatever. Right. Right. And so these things are bound to happen. I mean, Oh, and what's the other one? We're looking for a specific birthmark. Right or the yes. devil's mark, the witch's mark, yeah, the devil's mark. Yes. Now, how many quote unquote devil's marks do you think were actually just really fucked up or weird birthmarks that yep. were just there, or storks marks on the back of the neck? Stork marks, very yes. common. Yep, very common for humans throughout yep. history. But if that person got on the wrong side of the wrong politician or clergy member, well, clearly sign of the beast on them yes it it, wild shit and all of this was because he thought that there was a group of scottish witches that were coming after him and his wife his wife must have been smoke show because he was like this girl can't make it here there's a storm okay i'm gonna go get her then i'm gonna go go get her in the storm Uh, that's devotion keep in mind he was gay (laughs) i'm just that's why he had to go get her Right, he had, oh, he had to double down and protect his beard. And he's probably short. I'm saying too. He was he probably might been, he might have flowed both ways. You never know. I mean, being a king, you probably get all kinds of ass. Well, I mean, he had but kids, so you can. He had to prove. Him. Yeah, his machismo. It was more about that, I think, than the yeah. floating both ways. I think he was like, just because I'm this way doesn't mean I'm not a man. Yeah. That's how I felt. <laughs> he said to project the image of the bastion of Protestantism, King James the First, and all that. So you know, if his lady's in trouble, he's got to be the the hero, even if yeah. he doesn't really care about his bestie. He's more worried about his man at arms. But whatever. Yes. Oh, too funny. And and there's rumors that he was kind of looked down on because he was black, right? Like, wasn't this part of it? Like King did James you guys hear the First. I thought this was part of it that they they had rumors that <laughs> if that's yeah. true, I've never heard this. I'm not gonna say I'm gonna not, Google because I'm gonna Google. Anything. But if that is true, King James the First of Scotland being black, I'll check it up. I feel like that would have 
kind of made a little bit more of a ripple in the historical precedence of the kings of England. But yeah, I, I was, right there. You're... was King James the only black king to rule England? Yeah, hold, when yes. they say black king, do they mean like the black prince of Wales? They said, but they described his hair. They described his hair as being um, oh. like like woolly hair and different things like Af African type stuff. Yeah. Which yeah, cool. It says, it says right here that he was an indigenous black European. Yeah. I'm oh, sorry. Indigenous black European. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, his mom just found one that she liked a lot. I mean, I Bro, get it, girl. <laughs> they have indigenous melanated European tribes that we just have not known about until now. They were going on safari. You know, Clearly. the rich people do it. You know the story <laughs> of the, the upper north yes. of Germany, how crazy yes. dark the dark forest can be. Yeah. Yeah. They were going on safari. I don't well, know how she made it. A website right here, and it says the King J <laughs> it's by um Israelitesunite.com. So oh take dude, these watch. are the Hebrew Israelites that think that Jesus was black and the true Jews are black and everything. Ah. I fucking love these people. Have, if by the way. Anybody listening, if you ever get the opportunity to see a Hebrew Israelite, African-American man, and a Muslim Brotherhood, African-American man, get after it about which religion is the true religion of, of African-American people, dog, it is worth a listen. You'll hear some education oh be laid down. <laughs> and apparently we got from Europe as well. Yeah, yeah, it's a thing. I don't I don't know exactly how that happened with parentage because I didn't look that far, but I did I did notice that and I thought, oh well, he had something to prove. Yeah, he yeah. he he had something to prove. He wanted to be like so yeah, look makes sense. I wonder I mean, if that's the is, is that it came from would be from the, the nobility that had to explain one of their darker complected uh popped out of nowhere. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so when well, you look at yeah. the demonology book, right? Like in any way, I mean, I might just be the odd, the odd duckling in this situation. But honestly, whenever I see a book like that, and then you know, we do research on it, we make a couple of episodes about it, we get real familiar with it. It's like this is the guy that like was in charge of making the King James Bible. I mean, I know he wasn't the only one, mm -hmm. but he's the one who ordered it, right? And right. so it's yes. like, I don't know. Doesn't that make you want to question some of the things, not of the Bible, but of the King James Version? Why? Right, right. Why would that make you question if the dude who wrote the book on the positive side also wrote a book on the negative side? Why does that sound odd to you? Rather because than none of his... Both of these things. He's like presenting what some would argue, not saying I'm among them, some would argue that this would be kind of like he's showing you the whole scope, both the light and the dark. Yeah, but he didn't really have a good understanding of the dark to even be talking about it. And so that's my thing is that, he's you know, he, yeah. he, he, act, he acted like he knew so much about it, yet he couldn't have been farther from the truth. And so this is the guy that this absolutely was he. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I, there were probably, like I said, I mean, there's definitely people who are practicing on the dark side, sure. but to just automatically like think the way that he did, that was high royalty thinking. Uh, somebody below me is a papa. I think they're practicing with the devil. And it's like, I know I don't vibe with you now. Okay. Like, <laughs> We've had guests on our show come on to say the exact same thing, though, that said that pretty much all of the pagan pantheons were basically demons presenting themselves in other ways. And while this person may not have known that they were calling upon a demon to make this thing happen, it was, in fact, a demon that made it happen. Like, not, Joseph, I said it. I said that about Joe. Now, I'm not Joseph saying Smith. for sure. <laughs> Joseph Smith is another example, although he was also a, uh, what's it called, the stone in the hat trick where you could predict oh, yeah. Well, he was definitely channeling. I think he was channeling just like John D. I mean, it's too similar, you know. Right, possibly. And so, yeah, yeah, you never know. Well, but I'm not saying that that's actually true, in that all of the Greek pantheon is actually demons. I'm because I feel right. like that's a, a cop out culturally speaking. But that is at least an argument fielded in that regard. So, in that place, mm -hmm. to say that everything of the Bible is good and everything not is bad, that is a very 
polarizing opinion to take, but and that is an opinion that a vast majority of the world stands behind, even if it's not the Bible and demonology, whether that be the Quran and whatever their version of the book of the jinn would be, right? Which I'm mm-hmm. sure they have one. The Egyptian, you have the book of life and you had the book of the dead. Mm-hmm. Everybody's got this to varying degrees, correct? Yes. Yeah. Oh, I, everybody needs a boogeyman to reinforce, you know, everybody else to make them believe. I mean, that's just, that's fear 101. You always, in order to have any kind of strict layout and to keep people in line, I don't know about you, but whenever my daughter gets a bad grade, I don't inspire happiness in her. In her. No, no. <laughs> I'm saying I'm taking away your damn phone and you ain't getting it right. back until you bring them grades up. It's a fear mm-hmm. tactic. Not saying there's anything wrong with it, but let's just call it what it is. Well, and he must have been turned down a lot because, you know, he said 20 to one. The women were 20 more to one man that was practicing this stuff. And then also, like we said, he may have not had a true love for the women folk. (laughs) Now, to that point, another interesting thing to break down, not just in witchcraft. But in a lot of pagan religions, yes, being a high priest was highly exalted, but a priestess has always been seen as a different classification of commitment and dedication and knowledge base when it came to whatever sect or religion or worship that we're talking about, right? Like, to say we had a priest of Zeus was one thing. A high priestess to the temple of Zeus? No, we're talking about a different thing right now. You see what I'm saying? So across all cultures, women have had a stronger spiritual bond in most, I'm not going to say all, most cultures around the world. Even if they didn't take some sort of a matriarchal role as a culture or a society, a high priestess or a woman that has somehow more attuned to the spirit realm is always seen more, uh, more welcomed. I would say, than some guy who claims that he's hearing voices from the sky. Right. Uh, well, and and also, like, King James, he was, didn't he have that quote saying that, like, yeah, I'm gay. Uh, didn't you think Jesus wasn't or something like that? Remember, Jacob? <laughs> yeah, he was very, very it's, out. Dude, with it's stuff. context. The context. Mm-hmm. We, what's that? We just had our British boy on the other day. They speak a whole different English than we do today. Yeah, yeah. I found this article on guard. On you can't Guardian. say Fanny. You can't say Fanny in England. You know yeah, this. You when know? they call a cigarette, yeah. we call a hate crime. Apparently, and yeah. that goes over well. And whatever, whatever, yeah, yeah. And they have yeah. Knife, yeah. knife amnesty boxes. Meanwhile, I'm carrying as we speak. But like, hey, one of us won two world wars, and the other one kind of came close. Whatever. <laughs> I'm judging yeah, exactly. No, no. But I do find it really interesting that he made so many lines in the sand, right? Like he made this very like, this is what's up. There's these demons, these, this, that. I mean, he wa- he knew some stuff. I don't know why he knew all that stuff, but he knew some stuff. He knew some because stuff. Some of these trials were done on correct witches, on actual people who are practicing these dark arts. And that's the other thing, too. Uh, one of the reports I read said there was like 40 some odd women that were, or people, excuse me, people that were on trial at any given point. And so some of these confessions that were extracted from these trials, quote unquote, were in, I believe some of them were based in fact, some of these were practicing the dark arts and some of them did give over information that is accurate and is plausible. But again, It's like, where do we draw the line between what was firsthand knowledge gained from these trials and what Mm. was his opinion on the matter? Because he knows more than anybody else and he's ordained by God to be in this position to make such a call if this needs to be in this book or not. Like, you see what I'm saying? So I believe we have to look at it as the same way that we would look at Dante Alighieri's Divine Comedy. Mm -hmm. The same way we would look at Paradise Lost is the same way we should look at demonology. It is very well-made fanfic, and Mm -hmm. some of it can be gleaned and applied. Some of it is according to canon. Some of it is, in fact, essentially fanfic and can be taken and left as such. 
Uh, my favorite fan pick of the of the whole book was about Satan's booty hole getting a kiss. <laughs> yeah. This was some uh, craziness. I was like, what? <laughs> oh, straight up was like they they be fucking. They they the, Satan the, does, calls to them and they just come and just it's a whole thing. And I'm like, well, okay, <laughs> all right. Even in jail, like in their prison cells, like he's just gonna pop on up in there in the cell and just be like i want that ass and like it's like that dude can other people see it and it's like uh we don't know cut to next chapter like wow wow well and the description of it being a very cold muscular hard buttocks that was like Uh, like uh, like a rock hard booty yeah doing the squats apparently apparently does not miss leg day Ah, but his vagine hang like sleeve of wizard. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yes. That one was uh, quite the interesting. So that was one of the things, like he said, that they commune together and uh, had their little seances and then okay. they kiss, kiss the booty. Another example of that, right? Talking about how they commune. How do they Diddy. from place? Yeah. <laughs> Diddy. No doubt. Diddy be Diddy. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but uh all right so how do they get there do they fly there do they evaporate there whatever and he gives a couple of different examples of how they get there one they straight up fly like just through mm-hmm. the air and then somehow broomsticks came into the picture somewhere around the 1500s and we actually showed a picture of the first actual depiction of a quote-unquote witch riding a broom it was from like a manuscript from the 14 1500s somewhere in there but Either that was how they're doing it, A. B, you know, they were just traveling in secret, just staying off the beaten path. Or C, astral projection makes its mm. appearance so nonchalantly, 1596 or whatever the fuck. It was like, wait, I'm sorry. What? Which is funny <laughs> whenever you talk about like witches flying on broomsticks, because really where that originates from is that, you know, it was a fact that like, you know, most women back in the day, they... They uh they took care of the kitchen and they were always cleaning and sweeping and cooking and all those things and so a woman would always have a broomstick in their hand right and that's that's mm-hmm. like the the cartoon image of a woman back in the day is a woman right. with a broomstick in her hand with a fucking baby in the other arm right and mm-hmm. it's like um but really the whole idea around witches flying on broomsticks really came from uh they used to use this stuff called flying ointment. And that flying ointment, it said, now you would, you know, maybe you would apply it to your skin. Maybe you would take it orally. A lot of them would shove it where the sun don't shine. And oh um, and it would cause them to hallucinate or fly. Yeah. Key string. Key at the beginning. <laughs> well, that we know. They, they, yeah. were, they would be believing they were flying around on broomsticks. They were boofing mm-hmm. fly, flying ointment, bro. Hell yeah. I, I'm telling you. Uh, and and so you're reading this all going, really? This is the same dude that the Bible came from? <laughs> We're um, keystring and booty kissing. To okay. The Bible didn't come from him, the English translation. Right. 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 Putting it together. Yes. No, it not he didn't. His desk. It had to go through his desk. I'm sure he had to approve some shit. Let's yes. just be real. He's just stamping. Yeah. <laughs> He's he's putting the stamp on it or the mark, shall we say? Ha ha. There you go. <laughs> oh boy, yeah. What 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 was your favorite part of this uh, crazy little book, Jonathan? Um, I just loved how extremely misunderstood they were. Um, almost people judging from an ivory tower, looking down on the people of the village, and just talking about how they were all, you know, in communion with witchcraft. And and what's crazy is, is that even uh, they're all they're all really getting down with witchcraft, and most of them know that it's with the dark lord. But you know, I feel bad because some of them don't even know that they're actually talking to the devil. They just don't know, and they're willfully like misunderstanding it. And I just feel bad for them. But you know what? Maybe we'll cut them some slack but they do need to be put in their place and it's like come on dude i was just really like i don't know i thought it was pretty funny the whole damn book personally (laughs) i thought it was funny that so many people got accused but a reason for that was if you accuse your neighbor and say they drowned like you knew they couldn't swim say you knew them your whole life and and you're like johnny can't swim so i think johnny might be a witch because if he drowns you get his stuff so 
and it, it, that saying. is in fact what led to the puritan movement in the 1600s and the 1700s and all these other witch trials that we see made fun of in these movies and all these things yes. it didn't spark from demonology but demonology was absolutely used as a source i gotta say though reading the whole thing the most interesting part for me was how many of these practices have persisted and the the stigma behind it being a dark art or something bad behind it has stuck with not all of the things listed but definitely a good number of them um certain things that even growing anybody that grew up in the bible belt whose mom rant and raved about their school having harry potter will know the random little things that i'm talking about and it's like mm -hmm. a list of 100 things that were off top you couldn't list but if somebody mentioned something like this to you or ooh look at this new ring i got you would see that symbol and trigger some sort of a core memory unlock in your head and you'd be like oh, that's satan it's like a bobby boothface mom moment almost she comes in with the face <laughs> and, the, and, the, and all of that right it, what's crazy is those things that these we grew up like looking to and recognizing is like this is a symbol for that. That's a sign for that. That's just Satan and camouflage. Mm -hmm. da, da, da. It was the same things almost verbatim in the 1500s that they were looking out for and that they were watching. So I just found that to be very, very interesting. Well, what also mm -hmm. is interesting too, and and I don't mean to harp too much on the original, like the King James version of the Bible, but also if that is how people of their time understood how spirituality worked, then I think that we should question some of the verbiage and try and figure out if maybe they used a couple of wrong words because they misunderstood what was really going on in the Bible. So instead of saying that, I don't know. You're, I don't even know. Uh, instead of saying like, I love you. Maybe that was, maybe it's more of a friendly gesture, but you take it as I'm in love with you, you know? And so it's, there's probably some little tweaks in there that maybe they got wrong because I mean, to me, it's clear that they didn't understand a damn thing about spirituality in general. Well, to right. that point, also keep in mind, this is like the first Protestant King, quote unquote. When we think Protestant, we think of like, modern day non-denominational baptist uh, uh you know these things this was 1500s protestant bro this is like i'll put it like this the methodist church would have been seen like fucking heretics by these people like this was protestant quote unquote but it was very much Early. regimented by the right. it was just slightly off catholic like mm -hmm. and by slightly, I mean there was like you know Martin Luther was hit with his whole letter. Those were the only differences, not all ninety nine of them. That was it. You know what I mean? It wasn't it wasn't this far cry that we're thinking today. So the verbiage that was used and the way that it was portrayed and the way that everything was laid out, it was kind of across the board because they knew that even the Catholics would be reading this book. They knew everybody would be reading that book. So they tried to lay it out in a way that was like for everyone. Right. That's why right. he wanted it to be from Latin into English so that even the common man could read it. Because at that time, the only ones that could read Latin were the priests or the clergy yes. or the elites or the educated that had the gift of illumination, i.e. knew how to fucking read and write. Well, and I think it's funny that he um, gave a, a split across about witchcraft, but then was like fairies. That's not real. And like a bunch of other stuff like what? He's just like, meh, none of that. That's, but then that's he went silly. into a whole thing about how the fey folk and these brownies and these elves and all of this, it's actually just demons. I'm like, okay, so you say all fey folk are fake. That's not real. But brownies, <laughs> a.k.a. leprechauns, totally real, totally demons. Like, but whoa, what? It, it, like that. <laughs> that's the kind of shit where it's like, all right, you got a couple of things quote unquote right that like these like thought processes still persist today. And then we hear some shit like this. That's the same as like a priest going on today and being like, these are the ways. And by the way, the fucking Smurfs. We got to watch out. For the bastards. <laughs> Wait, bro, what are you talking about right now? So just just to get y'all's opinion on this, because like y'all know, I didn't grow up Christian. I, I do enjoy learning about it. That's why, like, honestly, our past few episodes on the cold have been centered around Christianity. Very Christian based. Accidentally, it's been very yeah. random. 
our boy Josh Monday. Heidi, if you haven't gotten him on the show, definitely. Love Josh. Okay. And also our boy Brandon Kroll, who is an absolute stud at all of this. Yeah. Yeah. Brandon's um, awesome. And so anyway, it just makes me think the the question I want to ask y'all is, is that, you know how for us, whenever we first got into certain conspiracies, we started understanding the adrenochrome and the elites and all of the satanic rituals and, and stuff like that. All the imagery, all the stuff that plays in the subconscious. We understand all of it by now. Mm -hmm. Um Whenever we stumbled across Tom Hanks and all that Isaac Cappy shit that he was doing, we didn't, we were like, yo, I'm, I'm, I don't want to see another Tom Hanks movie ever again. I'm not going to lie. It was just like a couple of months ago that I decided, I was like, you know what? Let's see if Castaway hits the same. And it doesn't, you know what I mean? Because knowing what you know now, the volleyball with the face on it and all the Hollywood people dressing up as that and Ellen and everybody else. And it's like, I can't look at this the same now. So, I literally threw that baby out with all of the bathwater. Mm -hmm. So looking at King James and all of his weird shit, I mean, you don't feel that same way about the Bible in general, but I, I wonder if you feel that same way about the King James version in general. I, I personally don't, but I do feel like the Bible was desecrated when they started taking things out anyways. Like I don't believe in chucking the books all out I, i'm all about the extra canonical books in general which is not always a widely accepted thing but i feel like we go back to that whole thing like you've got to have the full knowledge you can't just be chucking out the good parts you know because they were saucy or whatever yeah. <laughs> i mean you know and then it gets back into this so i i feel like there was there was a common ground there and i feel like he had to go yeah we got to draw the line somewhere and i feel like that's what he did with the fairies and everything too because he's like this is it's crazy because they were leaving gifts outside for like you know the brownies and different things and like all this and i, I think he was just like we got to stop some of this you know like this is getting out of hand but i mean why i don't know maybe he had a bad experience with one once <laughs> I'll say this, bro. Uh, just to answer that question with an example. So Thomas Jefferson wrote a version of the Bible, which if anybody would like to go pick it up, go look it up. It's incredible. It is literally a Bible of nothing but direct quotes from Jesus Christ himself. Uh, yeah. yeah. Excellent things. Thomas fucking Jefferson, dude. Right? Huh. Keep in mind, Thomas Jefferson was a slave owner that famously raped multiple slaves and fathered how many unknown, untold numbers of bastard children? Now, mm -hmm. now, 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 am I going to throw out all of the baby with the bathwater on that? No. The words within Thomas Jefferson's Bible that he may have wrote aren't his words. Okay. Right. Now, I, being me, have the belief that the Bible is our manna. It is our portion. It is not supposed to answer all of our questions. And as you said, Heidi, I wish I had all of those gaps of knowledge. I wish we had the whole picture. But I do, in fact, believe that we were given the Bible that we were supposed to receive. This is the word mm. that we were supposed to get. I am not saying that other books and other literature are not important and shouldn't be studied. Same way I said about the fan fiction of Dante's Inferno, Paradise Lost. Read them. They're fascinating. They're an interesting snippet of someone else's interpretation of what may have happened or something like that. It's great. But like the, the Gospel of Thomas, I don't think is a real thing just because it was found and dated back to the right time. There's a reason it didn't make it to the Bible. It doesn't belong there, right? So I do believe that while the Bible is not a complete uh, edition, I believe that it is supposed to answer the questions that is supposed to answer for us. We will learn the rest when we get there. And yes, it does kill me to not have all of that knowledge, especially whenever I'm sure that somewhere in there is a nugget of knowledge that could help drastically in our situation. But I also personally believe that God has a plan. And for whatever reason, well, it is within his plan for us to not have that knowledge right now faith right we can't have faith if we have all, all the answers that's what it always goes back to for me is and discernment and faith you know and so at the end of the day i mean that's what it's really about yeah you, know? you gotta have them 
but this is where yeah. me and Jacob always are, you know, at our own ends with this is because I don't accept the fact that there is information that somebody once understood, whether it was somebody that wrote the Bible, whether it was somebody, that, you know, wrote a specific book, a spiritual book that is now commonly accepted. I, I don't accept the fact that somebody was able to understand it, but I never will be able to. Like that's, mm -hmm. you got to think about it. Yes. Was it some kind of channeled information from the heavens and getting messages from God and, and, G, and like, I get that. But those messages, wherever they came from, dreams, uh, prophecies, whatever, they were interpreted by men. And so if those men were able to understand it, I don't accept the fact that I'm not able to. Well, let me ask you this counterpoint. Um, in a hundred years, I am pretty convinced that there will not be an, an American alive that can actually hook a plow up to a live mule and plow a field. I'm convinced if things continue on the trajectory they're on right now, right? Unless we have some sort of societal collapse or apocalypse. Yeah, 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 yeah. On the, on the hypothetical construct that we will still have civilization in a hundred years, I believe that the information, the knowledge that it takes to hook a mule up to a fucking plow and plow a field will be lost to the sands of time, gone forever. That doesn't mean that the knowledge is not out there and that somebody is not capable of finding it and learning it. It just means that it's lost. And I think that that mm -hmm. also doesn't mean that it's something that needs to always be resurrected. Sometimes there's a reason why shit's lost to time. I don't know. Good point. I like that point. That, I mean, there are certain I mean, things that are lost like, time. Because that point doesn't even line up because that's like a craft. And we're talking about knowledge, mm -hmm. right? Knowledge doesn't do the same way. That's why stories have been passed down orally for generations before they were ever wrote down. So, like, maybe that's not a fair comparison. But I example, you know? Sure, that's sure. But I, I just, but I also think that, like, it probably wouldn't be that hard to figure that part out. Even if, even though you, you know. Maybe. It's just okay. hooking a fucking plow up to a bull. I mean, that's what they were like created for. I've never done it. Maybe it really is as simple as that. And even a caveman could do it. Get mad at me, Geico, dude. But like, you know, I, who knows? Who knows? I, maybe I'm completely talking out of my ass and there's some old farmhand laughing his ass off listening to this. And them <laughs> boys are dumb as shit. I don't know. But I also know <laughs> that in the, in the age of information and disinformation that we live in, Facts. it it's possible to come up it's possible to come upon knowledge way easier now than it ever was then it's not even close if you were getting knowledge back then it was because of your town priest your town pastor maybe your mother maybe a couple of friends in the village like you weren't getting you know uh spiritual insight from india if you were living in fucking england and it's like nowadays we have access to it. Yes, yeah. are there some, sure some? There's some definitely some shysters out there. Don't get me wrong, sad guru, calling you out, homeboy. Yeah. But like there, but there are definitely people who take it serious, and you know, it's that discernment, you know, like you guys talk about. You're right, dude. Sure. I mean, if back in the day, your wise man, your smart guy of your town, bear listen, that boy, he done went to ninth grade. Like that's real shit. That's also right. kind of scary that that would be your town smart guy. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, and they hide so much. I mean, they, I am 100% convinced that they lock so much away from us, which is why faith is so important for us, you know, because you know that they've messed with it. You know, we know, look at what they do to the normal, just not bringing religion, anything or God into it. Like, look at what they do. You know, so, uh, I mean, I don't think we're untouched in that, in that level. No, so. I don't think we're untouched, but my biggest fear as far as that's concerned is not that the words within the Bible have been changed. Although there are people that have shown us, uh, uh, I had John on, I you had know, John you know on where I'm going with this. Our John, yes. Kerwin. John Kerwin is John Kerwin. Shout out. Yes. Yeah. yes. So like, and, and that too, no doubt, not taking away from that. But what I'm more terrified of is the people that are supposed to be teaching the word will only teach. It's like it'll go in the opposite direction. Instead of these people taking snippets of information from the Bible and throwing it in people's face, like, see how crazy it is? Because they don't use the context adversely, equal and oppositely bad. 
you have pastors and you have priests who are using this one snippet out of the Bible to make an entire sermon out of without any of the proper context of that verse. And what I'm more afraid of is, as it talks about in the end times, men will seek the word and will not be able to find it. Now, does that mean they won't be able to get their hands on a hard copy of the Bible? Possibly. Does that also mean that when they go to these churches, to these houses of learning and, and worship for this God, for this religion, they'll go there and won't even hear the fucking words of the book that they're saying they're teaching out of. That's genuinely where I'm worried. And as I see society drifting this way and you see these pastors that like, and it's something so small. It used to be, you'd hear pastors, uh, they would preach about all these things, but like they wouldn't mention homosexuality ever mm -hmm. positive negative they just kind of never even paid it any attention and that was like mm -hmm. a neutral playing field right that was you didn't want to speak on it because certain members of their staff were very clearly a part of that community and they didn't want to make any waves and all, okay okay fine and you saw some of the old timers some of the old sticks in the mud get a little a little ruffled about that but things right. kind of stayed neutral for a bit slowly but surely that is not even the issue anymore it's them telling you how to vote. It's them telling you how to feel in regards to some attack that happened three fucking continents away that ain't got shit all to do with anything that the pastor should be teaching about on that Sunday morning. It's that kind of shit. It's like that well, SpongeBob, yeah. that SpongeBob yeah. meme whenever you're in church and the pastors, you know, he's all standing up in front. Jesus brought us this vaccine. Thank you, Jesus. And then it's SpongeBob and he's like, he's like, all right, I'm going to head out. <laughs> right. <Not here. laughs> but it's with changing the words i'll tell you like the one that messed me up really bad with john is the lion and the lamb because the wolf yeah. and the lamb here's the thing when i was little i always got taught that we wouldn't have our bibles we had to memorize them and they're going to come for them and chop our heads off okay so that whole thing but if you change the lion who is like representative of the house of david okay right. and it's come he's coming to gather his people and the wolf doesn't do that the wolf is a predator by and far more so especially than a male lion because honestly if you know anything about lions the females are the hunters by and far so i mean it changes it so my thoughts are with that whole mandela situation is what if they change it enough to change the meaning for the people that don't have faith and discernment because they might not understand, you or know, what if they change the book yeah. of revelations when they're talking about what to look for and what sure. the signs will look like, they all of a sudden come up and change it to instead yeah. of the mark of the beast, it's the chip of the beast. Yeah. It, it could be anything. Yeah. The point where chips are no longer what we use. That's like antiquated by that point. And it's like, see, it wasn't even, small things but also oh, yes. look, at, look at how like if it was changed now i didn't grow up that way i don't know i do remember hearing those those you know uh, uh room uh what is it the baby uh nursery rhymes the lion or the yeah the lion and the lamb lion that and lion was there i'm a leo and i identified with that lion because i was like oh that's like a, you know like i mean it's stupid. But, and you're not oh. supposed to even do it as a Christian. But I remember as a kid, I was all about it. I was like, I still identify with that. <laughs> right. the, thing oh, is, Leo, is that, the thing is, though, I mean, you think about it. All, I mean, what they say, I don't know if, if, if most people believe this or not, that all dogs like evolve from wolves. Right. And most people like are you're more likely to have a dog in your house than you would a fucking lion. And those lions, I mean, a dog. I, don't, I mean, most dogs, you raise them the right way. They're really gentle with kids. Like I got mm -hmm. two puppies, super gentle with my baby. And yeah. so maybe that's the lamb and the, and the wolf. I don't know. Just trying to think outside the box. Possibly do look evolutionarily speaking, which I'm not particularly fond of the Darwinism approach, but evolution in some regard, dogs and humans actually have grown so attached to each other that we actually release dopamine and serotonin in each other when we like when we pet our dogs it releases the receptors to make us happy and them happy chemically speaking we don't get that from cats all these cat people out there and yes i got two of them i, I fucking hate it they, they, they don't do shit either they just lay around they don't even hunt they're sassy they're sassy too they're like look at my butt 
Look at my butt. <laughs> one of them, not the other one is for no reason. He's a piece of shit. I so, oh, funny. Anyway. so that being said, petting on a cat doesn't give you serotonin and dopamine. Petting a dog does. I don't know. So maybe maybe the there's Mandela effect for the good in that sense. Possibly. Maybe. Man, I don't know. The Matrix was like, ah, you know what? Let's make this more realistic. But it messes with you. Either it, way, I'm saying that messed with me. Like, not yeah, that, just that. Even the whole Sinbad and Kazam or Shazam, oh, like that one, I, I, I knew for a fact that I remembered Sinbad in that movie. Like, that's how crazy yeah. it was. Like, I knew no, that I, I, remember that. I remembered a lot of parts from that movie. And, and people were like, no, you're just thinking of the one with Shaq. And I'm like, I remember fucking yeah. Shaq. I would know Shaq. I saw the one with Shaq. And that's why whenever they came out with the one, because the way I remember it is the one with Sinbad came out first and then Shaq came after that one. And I was like, oh, yes. they're just a spinoff for Shaq. Part two. Yeah, yeah. part two, because they were into that for a hot minute with everything, it, you know. I remember right. the Shaq one. I don't remember Sinbad's movie whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And the only reason I remember the Shaq one specifically is because it was A, horrible and b it was like they missed the mark on the timestamp because like they were at the very end he had to use his final wish and he got this golden like fucking cassette tape that mm -hmm. was going to save the day because it had the track on it that these people needed or he was going to get the shit beat out of him whatever a cassette tape in an old school boom box like yo cds were a thing but when they shot the movie, they weren't like popping yet. By the time the movie released, CDs were popping. Mm -hmm. And I remember looking at the like, who the fuck deals with gold cassettes anymore? When did this movie made? And it was made <laughs> a year prior. And I was like, ooh, big swing and a miss, Disney. All right. Well, oh. that's the thing, too. It's like, you know, whenever that came out, it was clearly like the worst version. It was a B-rated version of the Sinbad one. And yeah. I remember yeah. because yeah. as a as a kid, I used to love Sinbad. What yeah. was it? Um uh with the, the president's daughter, right? Yeah. Oh yes. no, 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 no. You're thinking of uh, the first kid. Oh yeah, the first kid. Yeah, but you don't mix them up. They look and are totally different. I mean, like we're talking about Shaq. He's not. He's not somebody that you confuse with many other people. Like he's like, seven foot tall. A he's really a fucking nephilim. We're not confusing that with Sinbad. Yes. Not to yes. mention, I've never heard someone mistake Sinbad for anyone else either. He has a very no. distinct look and name that goes with him. No one yes. else does it like Sinbad. You know what I mean? That's kind of a thing. Yep. I mean, yep. maybe like the funky Cole Medina. That's, you know, we'll go there. <laughs> what was his name? To uh, Tone Loke. Tone, Tone Loke. Tone yeah, you might be able to switch him back and forth. I don't know. Maybe that's racist, but. Um, oh, my God. <laughs> I forgot. Oh. I am laughing about the song Funky Cold Medina because I forgot about it. Then we dropping those. Love ones. it. All right. Fuck yeah, man. Ah. Full set. Old school hip hop is all day long for me until uh, the kids yeah. started singing it. Right. Then you're like, oh, I got to turn that off. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I just mean, kind of know. My 11 year old has decided he wants to hear some OG rap. So, like, all right, I go on the Sirius XM, I go to this stuff, and I'm playing old Snoop. And old Dre and like yeah, yeah some of those songs we can't play for obvious reasons, but like I like the the fact that my song knows about Nate Dogg and Warren G speaking mm -hmm. about the regulators. That's a good thing that my eleven year old in twenty twenty four knows what to do. You know, until oh, Daddy ruined it for everyone. <laughs> I just, I'm not thinking of Tone Loke. I'm thinking of Ice T. I got those two confused, but you could You're see the resemblance a little bro, bit. Hold on, Ice T and Sinbad. I'm just saying, same complexion, you know, same like super cool dudes. I don't know. I could never confuse the two. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, uh, in I'm general, Sinbad is his own. Like, I don't think I would confuse it in general. Like, that was right. no. It, and there were a lot of things like the judge, not lest G be judged, never existed. Mm -hmm. What? Yeah. What? Yeah, where does that I mean, come from then? I mean, no, it, I don't, it, it was in it. It was it in says, there. It was not, and it says, "For judgment is mine," <sighs> so say it the Lord. But it's like ah. you paraphrase that, and it sounds about right. And then that just kind of gets ran, and then ran back, and then here's back one that time. it's like that did not get changed and ran back. Forgive us our trespasses. 
I went to Catholic school, as weird as that is for a Mormon. They had some advanced dumb program. My mom stuck me in there and I had to learn the father's prayer. And it was like, we went to mass on Fridays. It, no mistake. I still know Hail Mary's and I have no reason for them, but the, it's in there. It's all in there. And I, I know for a fact, and that does change the words again, change the meaning on that one, because that's a sin. A trespass is a sin or can be, whereas a debt is not really the same thing. You it know, is it is that not. Any sense think, at all. I remember mm -hmm. forgive us our trespasses. And yes. I'm going to have to pay attention when I go on my retreat this year and we do the prayers at the mass and whatever. But the last time I remember was it was still trespasses, at least in Louisiana. Now, maybe these are yeah. haven't gotten the memo to change things up yet. But I do know that there have been slight changes to like the prayers that are done at mass and the order of precedence and the uh, what is the one? Oh, shit. It's the one that they do. It's a big, long recited prayer. Um, the hell Mary one yeah, no, no. during mass. It's um, hold on. Oh, oh, I know what you're talking about. The five suffered and buried on the third day rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the father. He will come again to judge mm -hmm. the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in one holy apostolic church. That long prayer. That's like an yes. entire yes. Minute of mantra that the whole church does. I used yes. to know that by heart because I went through catechism. So I was like 14 they have changed like half of that. They've made certain parts shorter and they've made other parts longer. And then they've added other shit. And I'm like, I thought Catholics are all about keeping it as traditional as possible. Right. For like, you know, Rome and shit. Y'all be changing it. Well, it's the Cardinals and the popes and all that shit and all the saints coming up with their own sayings and all that stuff. That's what I'm saying, dude, these guys, they're about tradition. They're about in keeping yeah. the old ways of the of the original church and the original and everything's got to be a certain like it's very crazy to see these people who did not change a fucking thing mm. until uh, what was it uh, in the 1950s uh, Council of Nicaea two. Or uh, no, the Vatican II, excuse me, the Vatican II, the big meeting where they decided what the future of the Catholic Church looked like. There was hundreds of years where they didn't change a thing. 1950 comes, they change certain things. Then you have these like hardcore old school cats, and then you have the new Catholic movement. And now since this Pope, they have slowly but surely been whittling away and whittling away at the very foundation of what makes Catholics Catholic tradition mm -hmm. interesting though that all that didn't really um <laughs> they got together in 1950 for that whenever roswell was literally right before that that's what i was gonna say i was gonna say the same thing i was gonna say because the aliens came <laughs> like hold up hold up if there's aliens it might debunk our whole story let's try and let's try and get ahead of this thing so there yeah. is a conspiracy that says, and again, we should do an episode on this, especially the Vatican II in the 1950s, because there is a conspiracy. There is, in fact, a cork board out there with a red string connecting these two points to say that UFOs were not only a thing brought up at this meeting, but the main reason for the calling of the meeting, because they had to get their story straight because they knew what was going to be happening in the next century and they needed to get ahead of it. Now, I don't know. Mm. I mean, dude, Roswell was 1947, bro. You're talking about three years later, y'all get together. It's, mm -hmm. it's weird timing. It's weird timing. Oh yeah. Just, you know, it's I wonder how come this book, these books, as much as the King James Version took off of the Bible, how come this didn't go anywhere, right? Like, this is weird to me because you hear about the lesser keys of Psalm and you hear about, like, I mean, they used demons to build the temple. They, they did all this stuff, but yet this just died like a so slow death. Yeah. The lesser and greater keys of Solomon have been used by the occult right as the basic right. for their sacred geometry demonology isn't an actual source of like how to do anything although in the beginning no. uh preface of the book he does say to go to like the fourth book of cornelius agrippa and he, he does mention where to find these practitioners and their works 
demonology kind of got relegated and put on the back burner and kind of lost and forgotten about in a lot of regards because it's not a source. And there's also way better books out there. Even if you're not looking on how to practice this, what is that one? The Max Grimoire? Uh, basically the demonic Bible, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, it's the yeah. first one that actually has a depiction of a demon being a horned creature with a little tail or something because that image didn't exist prior to the Middle Ages. That book, if you're looking for a real source of what a demon is supposed to look like, smell like, what to do, how to do, whatever, that is way more of a good first source than King James's extractions from torture sessions combined into a conversation of two guys at a pub you know what i mean but putting the clout behind it right like okay why why like granted there was a book before this too that was way more i can't remember the name way more inclusive all about witchcraft right there was uh I, it escapes me at the moment but you know they still took this and he made it so important where he's such an important person and the Bible took off in that realm. Like it makes you wonder that they would at least maybe say, and this is like a sidestep, you know, not that it should be a Bible by any means, but just that right. like, yeah, it would, <laughs> one would take off. You peaked literally at the Bible, bro. You don't need that. that right. next run. This is in the beginning of your new literary career. You, just, just let it let it end at the you know quit it at the top right the book of torture didn't go over well but <laughs> shock <laughs> and right and and demons at night raping people and everybody's doing bad things all the time like uh, other than that i mean but at the end of it all you have to you have to take it all right you have to say okay well what's he trying to go at here what does this mean was he just obsessed? They say he was. They say he was super obsessed with it because he would sit in on all the trials and all this stuff and that he was really thinking that they were after him, you know, because also, keep in mind the Highlands of Scotland have always been known for their quote unquote witchcraft. If you've ever seen the show mm -hmm. Outlander or read the books, the reading of the tea leaves, the the druidism, the like deep uh, Celtic religion and that tradition held out in Scotland for a very long time, arguably up until the Battle of Culloden Moor, when that was pretty much the death of the Highland way of life. So up until the 1700s even, so well during the time when this book was being written, you still had arguably true Druidism being practiced all around King James mm -hmm. in his country, King James of Scotland as he is supposed to be the bastion of Protestantism. So when you hear him bring up the fact that fairies are fake, but brownies are real, it's like you can see that tinge of like, all right, we're clearly having a little bit of some hatred towards some Scottish uh, homeward grown fables here. Okay, I'm with you. I see this. That that witch yeah. book that you were talking about, Hammer of the Witches, is that what you're referring to? Yeah, dude. I th I think so. I think it was the one it was be it was published before. I think it was like 1595 or something like that. Yeah, but 14, the, yes, 14, 14 is the most dangerous book ever written or one of the top five most dangerous books ever written. Yeah, it says here um, in 1485 14, and it was called Malleus Maleficarum that, or that, translated yes. to Hammer of the Witches. Yes. Yep. yep. That's that the one. I recognize it better when you said it in the weird. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to have to read that one now. Malleus. I know yes. you are. I was afraid of you finding it because now you're the guy's going to be like, let's read it and do stuff for it. It's like, no, Yay! I literally just told you this is an evil book, like written for evil. the principle of only evil. There's no good to be gleaned from it. There's no have... information that we can pull. That's going to make your life better. That's not what's here. If we they have said any, it was really evil. Yeah. If we have any meta mystery listeners know that the hammer of the witches is coming <laughs> near you soon. Okay. <laughs> He's giving you I this. Mean, what are you going to do? You know, you, you, you got to love them. Sometimes you want to slap, but you, you, you just got to love them. Hey, let me, just be that you home. let me be that little kid and put my hand on the stove, bro. I got to, I got to know what it's like to get burned. You can, I can't take it on faith. I'm going to get the fucking silver lotion over here because I know it's about to happen. But go ahead. Put your get hand back. Yeah. ready for me, sir. 
You better, you better call the exorcist. But actually, King James says that that can't help you. Only fasting and prayer of your own. So another that's, thing, that's believable for sure. Exorcisms yes. are spoken of in the Bible, yet he's saying it's not real because the Catholics claimed that they could do it. Therefore, it can't be real. That's a Catholic thing, like yeah. bro, bro, what? Heidi, what's your view on on people who need exercise like that? Do you? Like, what do you think is actually going on with that? Do you believe that literally uh, a demonic thing is getting inside of people? Literally, I mean. I, I am telling you that I think there are doors that can be opened because as a mental health nurse and I see very psychotic, crazy things sometimes, there's a, we go back to this whole, uh, your, your feelings and your faith and, you know, having all these, this knowledge and like, prayer and all this stuff. Okay. So every day when I go to work, I might see the same thing over and over and over. And I might see somebody that I'm like, yeah, they're just mentally ill, whatever. But there's occasionally where one person will come in and it doesn't happen often. I've been doing this seven years. I, I'm a nurse 25. So I've seen other things, but in other places, but mental health specifically where you're like, nope, he is possessed. Like uh, you can feel it like one time I'm not a freak out girl. Like you can tell, like I, I'm very, I'm not good. Whatever. Okay. After 25 years, I've seen it, done it. It's fine. Whatever. You're not going to freak me out. But I got so freaked out one night with this kid. He was young too. He was like 19 and I ran crying. I don't cry at work. Guess how many times I've cried at work in my life, even with people dying like twice. And it's kids. I don't, I don't do the kids. Um, and so long story short, I ran out of that room crying and back to discernment. I was like, they were like, he wasn't even doing anything to you. He was staring into my soul with the most, I was so scared. I can't even explain. And he was like, not crazy looking. He was attractive and young. He was like very handsome guy, you know, athletic football player looking, Black guy, very handsome, like in his early 20s. Yeah. I mean, on the street, I'd have been like, oh, he's handsome, you know, but no, 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 no. This was something else. Yeah. And it wasn't even anything he did. That's the thing. It was like, oh, I got to get out of here. And I did. I panicked. I panicked and ran. Well, <laughs> I well, the, the reason I asked that is because. I, I'm not going to name specifics here, but I have somebody very close to me that is hard on the meth. I don't talk to them anymore, but very close. Right. Um, and I'm telling you, a f an absolute flip was switched. That is no longer the person that I knew a long time ago. This is a completely different entity. I'm talking about, I, and I say that with emphasis. It's an entity for sure. Um, yes. Now, what some people might say is, oh, did he just, you know, uh, fall down the wrong rabbit hole? Or, you know, is that just his mm -hmm. ego on full flex mode or something? No, no. There's definitely some kind of attachment going on here. So that's why I wanted to get your opinion on it because I do when, know you're a nurse and you see all that kind of shit all the time. My cousin who has really had a hard time with drugs, okay, and he told me one time, I don't ever do crack or meth because I'll tell you something. Uh, he's like, literally something goes inside of you. This is from a hardcore drug addict. That's like all about everything else, anything else, needles, the whole deal. He doesn't care. But that, those two things he said, mm -mm. and he ran screaming into a Catholic church one night because he had some weird thing happen. And I was like, the, yeah, don't do that anymore. But I think it's not the drug that makes it happen. It's the channel that it opens. It blocks certain pathways so that you can be literally taken over because those demons, and if you believe in the Bible, I'm sorry, you have to believe in demons and exorcisms. Like it's half of the Bible. It's half of what Jesus did. Like a hundred percent. I mean, he walked around taking demons out of people and you know, I just, I think that it's been really demonized because they don't want people better. They don't, they no. want people on, on medicine. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, and the thing is too, is, you know, to kind of bring it back full circle to what we were talking about in the beginning, whenever we got into alchemy and how that became chemistry and science and all that shit, a lot of people don't know. 
alchemy, yes, it did deal with certain herbs and certain elements and, and all that, but they also included the spirit. That was a very well understood thing that you, you not only were you mixing these things together, you were mixing these different spirits together. Mm -hmm. And, and so it makes me wonder meth, cocaine, like even alcohol, alcohol. Is, what was alcohol called back in alcohol. the day? Cool. Spirit. Cool. Exactly. Spirit. Yeah. Yes. Spirits. Right. And so it's like, you know, it, it really makes you a spirit attached to certain substances. Oh, absolutely. That's what I'm saying. And so uh, it makes sense to me that there could be some kind of spiritual thing that is uh, connected to these drugs. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, and also think about it, too. Like, you know, we say it about it. We talk about it all the time whenever you're talking about like uh, going to fast food, at Burger King, McDonald's compared to a home cooked meal that, you know, your husband or your wife or your kids or whatever make for you. It's like that home cooked meal is going to be cooked with love because they know that they're cooking it for people they love and yes. vice versa. I mean, looking at it the other way, Burger King employees could give a flying shit who you are. As a matter of fact, they don't even see you. They're not at the window. They're in the kitchen. And so that there's that spiritual connection there, too. Also, they're probably getting paid minimum wage and they hate their life. But let's they're just angry. real. Yeah. They're angry, right? Nobody wants to work at Burger King. Um, not saying that it's not a decent, like as soon as you get out of school kind of job, or if you need something to hold you over, there's nothing wrong with that. But like the mm -hmm. people that don't have any other option than to just do that for a long time, they're not, they're not the happiest people to be around. Um, no. and so I don't know, could there definitely be something with even the people that are cooking this shit up? Got to ask yeah. that. Too. Yeah, everything's back to, you know, transference too. I mean, there is a lot of things that people don't understand. And that's why they say, don't let everyone come in your house. It says this in the Bible. Don't entertain everyone. Don't shake everyone's hand. Don't always hug people. Like you have no idea, you know, really. And I'm not saying be standoffish, but there's, there's a certain way about things. You know, you got to kind of have an idea about somebody first before you go, you know, just going in because it, and I'm a hugger. Like I, I love to hug people, but like, I gotta have a little bit of knowledge first, you know, like, yeah. and the main thing is put the armor of God on every day. That's what I do very first and foremost, because the rest of this can be kind of averted with that because I have faith in God. So, you know, Absolutely. how exactly I do you do that, about doing that by the way, the whole that armor is of so God. quick. I problem? do not do the whole entire, there is um, Bible verse fully about it and you can go in depth and you can go tiny. And if I'm in a hurry, I'm just going to say a quick prayer. Good morning, God. Thank you for letting me wake up today. I, please put the full armor of God upon me and my family as we go out to do the things today. Like that, it, it, it can be that simple in Jesus name, always in Jesus name. But, you know, and I always, uh, lately I've been praying, um, I always used to say Jesus of Nazareth, which I still do. But now I also say the God of Abraham, because there's some people that say like God, and I don't think they mean who we mean. No. Know? Right. And, when they're up there getting their Grammy and they're like, my God, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, nah, I don't know what God you're talking about. I think there might be more than one in there. <laughs> I know there is a, a little G gods, you know, mm -hmm. but yeah, there's um, your, God, my God, his God, her God. It's like, mm -hmm. all right, you know, maybe we need a more specific name. Yes. And I just figure if I say that specifically, then, okay. He knows who I mean. Right, but like, also, it, it, probably, it probably does play into your intent, like you were talking about earlier. If you have the yeah. full intent, whenever you say God, you're 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 specifying there, and so there's right. probably some kind of avatar-like connection going on there. The the hair and the tail and whatnot. The hair and the tail, <laughs> and and all the things. <laughs> all the things yeah. we, we we have to make sure like we are specific with our intentions because they are very specific with theirs. <laughs> right. Uh -huh. We yeah. have to be careful. Yeah. And also, our God is a God of order. Um, he is a God of structure. So being mm -hmm. specific in your wording and what you're uh, trying to accomplish is, is very, uh, it's looked well upon um, just kind of yes. being open-ended with what you're asking. You may be open-ended with what you'll receive. I've learned yeah. that the hard way too. 
Yeah. You got to be specific. It's all about, like they say, it's kind of like court, you know, there's rules, there's mm -hmm. rules on all these things. And so I think, you know, the more you find out, the more you understand that. And, yeah. and it's a good thing. And, and if you don't know, is it held against you? No. Cause you didn't know. Right. Like God still knows your heart. But as for me, I'm very specific. <laughs> Probably a good practice. Well, yeah. Do you guys, you guys are headed, right? You got another one coming up yeah, or are you guys got another show coming up here in like 10 minutes, but okay. Um, yeah. I figured I'd let you plug one more time because I didn't want to cut it, cut it short to the end. I want to give you guys the full opportunity. I appreciate you guys so much. I know we scratched the surface, but we knew we were going to do that anyways, because this is supposed to kind of make you uh, think about this whole situation. They have a three part series about it. It's really good. You guys can bump into that and check that out. And where else can they find you guys? Well, first off, Heidi, you know, you got us just about any time you ask us. We love you. We love these conversations, whether it's on the cult of conspiracy or if it's on the unfiltered rise. Doesn't matter. As long as we're all together, it's always a good time. So we appreciate, you know, you uh, joining us or not joining us, but at, inviting us all onto your show. Um, yes. but that being said, yeah, the cult of conspiracy podcast, it's on all podcast platforms everywhere. We have an Instagram, um, uh, at cult of conspiracy podcast, Twitter, the same thing. Um, TikTok as well. And so, yeah, anybody wants to go check us out on any of the social media platforms, we try and keep up with it as often as possible. Um, we also have for anybody that's interested in seeing the video, because we got kicked off of YouTube so many times it won't even allow me to create another address to, to make another one. <laughs> Um, so, uh, if you ever want to see video and don't want to listen to the commercials or anything like that, we have a Patreon it's patreon.com slash cult of conspiracy podcast. Or if you're somebody who regularly listens to Rockfin, maybe you're there for somebody else. Rockfin is great because it has everybody for one price. And so, um, we're also on Rockfin over there, cult of conspiracy podcast as well. And I think that's it. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I appreciate you guys much love anytime. We want to cut it up. I'm down for that as well. So I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for coming on. Have a good night. Thank you. Have a good one. Bye. Bye.